Okay, we're going to continue with the last part of the exercises for today. This is probably the most complex part of Bro, and um, it's a little bit of an experiment because we don't know how many of you we reached with this exercise. So any feedback, even if it's very basic, is highly appreciated. And we, in this exercise, we have two parts. One is building a side-checking detector, and the other is writing a in HTTP analyzer for a web chat protocol. And who, who is familiar with Firesheep here? Who has heard about it? OK, great. I don't have to say a lot. And um, what, what we do in this exercise is we write a detector for Firesheep. And, and uh, it's a very stripped down version of it. It's not the full version exists in the Bro scripts repository. And um, it's a little more complex because it's sometimes hard to know what the notion of a user is behind a NAT. Do we use IP addresses? Do we use user agents to identify users? That's a whole separate problem by itself. We're not going to be concerned with that in this exercise for now. We think as of a user as being a single IP address. And just as a quick introduction, it's also written in a text that I'll give you a high level summary of, of what sidejacking or cookie or session hijacking means. It, it's simply if you, somebody observes your cookie on the, on the wire or in, through the air, takes that cookie, implants it in their own browser, and uses that valid session to identify or masquerade as that user. That works pretty well for most of, worked well for most of the site until I think earlier this year where, where Firesheep started implementing the actual hijacking connection over HTTPS. It's for Google, for Facebook, and for Twitter. It's impossible for the detector now to detect it, the, the, the actual attack, because the, even if the original connection is over HTTP, the hijack connection that Firesheep uses is then over HTTPS. But they both contain the same cookie. And um, that's, that's, it's for those three sites the sidejacking detector does fail at the moment. But for the list, I think it's around order 20 of other sites um, that Firesheep currently supports, it still works. And, and, and yeah, we're going to build a s simpler version of that in that exercise, which, which I just called session cookie reuse. It's if you see on the single IP address the same cookie being reused by two different user agents. Let's say in your iPhoto, so you have some RESTful API, and it has its iPhoto user agent. And then there's a Safari, and you use Firefox. And, and for some reason, there's a WebKit that shares the cookie, inter or so, in, something like that that can happen under the hood that causes this same session cookie to be reused in different contexts. Um, that's what we're trying to detect in this exercise. And um, the con this is part one. There's a scaffold provided, a bro scaffold that you can use to fill out. And the second part is is about Facebook detection. And, and in particular, it's about the web chat part of Facebook. It's the little box in the bottom right there where you can chat. And that chat is implemented as an AJAX connection. The AJAX connection is, can be compared to a long-lived BGP connection. It's something that you always have between Facebook and, and you. It's where all the stuff that Facebook wants to push to you is just sent as a JSON option, and um, if you want to notify Facebook about an update, it's also sent over this AJAX connection. So it's a separate channel that you use to communicate with Facebook. And this AJAX connection mm, contains all the messages. And your task in the second part is to extract the messages from the JSON and write them into a bro record. In a bro record, so that you can then work with your bro scripts uh, mm, with these high-level data structures. And then all of a sudden, you have <coughs> records to work with, <coughs> can, use, can, can pass them around to other objects and recreate the whole Facebook experience in, in Bro and write logs that, that represent the activity if you wanted to. I mean, in kind of Facebook, it's not really a security issue, but it, it's used as an example that is very, very many of you are familiar with to illustrate how you can create in HTTP 
and write and analyze it by yourself inside HTTP. Usually this is where it ends. HTTP is the protocol where Bro gives you the events for, but you could write, even go further inside and parse the data out and then um, start writing your own in HTTP analyzer. And that's, that's what this concept, this exercise is trying to, trying to illustrate. So I suggest you just give it a shot now, see how far you get. And um, if you have conceptual problems at the beginning, it's great to check in with us. We are um, trying to provide as much help as possible. <laughs>